Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to utilize a provisioner to configure the VS Code on our local terminal to be able to SSH into our EC2 instance. Now, a provisioner is not something you want to use for every deployment. Unlike other resources, a provisioner's success or failure will not be recorded or managed by Terraform State. So if something goes wrong, that's just too bad. There's no rollback or any other way to manage it other than just running it again. While this is not good for configuring remote instances, it's perfectly fine for something like this. All we're going to be doing is adding information to a config file on our local terminal. This is a lightweight operation that doesn't affect the overall success of the deployment if something were to go wrong. So with that being said, let's get started. First, we'll take a look over here at the provisioner documents. As you can see, provisioners are a last resort. Generally speaking, you're going to want to use user data, which of course we do, Ansible or Packer or Chef or something else, some other configuration management tool, if there's some sort of configuration we need to do on a remote instance. But once again, on our situation, it's perfectly fine and we can use the local exec provisioner to allow us to configure local machines and run local commands. As you can see, basically we're running a provisioner, and in this case a local exec provisioner, within an AWS instance resource. Provisioners are always run within another resource. This could be something called a null resource also, but we're not going to look into that right now. Now another thing we're going to use is this self object here, which basically allows us to access this instance and access information. So if we need a private IP or public IP or whatever, we're able to access that right here using this self attribute. Now, something else you might notice, we've got this dollar sign and braces here. That is interpolation syntax. And basically what that means is this is going to be replaced by whatever it is we're trying to use. So we've got a string here, but this here will be replaced by the private IP of this AWS instance. And you may have remembered that in our previous scripts. So let's go ahead and just get to work. So right over here, once again, we can take a look at our configuration files. And once again, remember these here, the same syntax, these are going to be replaced by the host name, the user identity file, whatever we need to pass in. So let's go ahead and start typing our provisioner. I'm going to go to the bottom of our instance resource here. We're going to type provisioner, just like so, and then local dash exec. We've been using underscores a lot throughout this script, as you remember, but this provisioner uses a dash. Make sure you remember that this is a dash or a hyphen and not an underscore. This is a mistake I have made many, many times. Open and close that provisioner block. Next up, we provide our command. Now this command is actually going to be run from these files here. And to run these files and pass in the variables necessary, we won't use the file function, we'll use what's called the template file function. So, we take a look at the template file function here. You can see that basically you pass in vars after you pass in the path. So for instance, you can take a look at here, template file, and then this here is the path, which is using this interpolation syntax and path.module, which is a built-in variable. And then you use a comma, and then within an object here with these curly braces, you pass in the variables that you need to pass in. So let's go ahead and do that. So for the path, in my case, since I'm on a Windows machine, I'm just going to use quotes, windows, dash ssh dash config dot tpl, just like so. If you are on Linux or Mac, you'll use the Linux version. And then after that, we need to pass in our variables. So I'll add a comma here, then open and close some curly braces, and we will pass in these variables. I'm actually going to indent this. First up, we need our host name. Remember, we had to pass in a host name there. And that host name is going to be self.public underscore IP. Remember, we have a public IP attribute for our instance that we used before. 
whenever we SSH'd into it. So we can just use self.publicIP here to access that. After that, we need to provide the user, and that's going to be Ubuntu because that is the EC2 instance username that we have. After that, we need to provide an identity file. So that identity file is going to be our private key. And the private key is located, we'll just use a tilde here, slash dot SSH, slash MTC key, just like so. All right, so that is all of the variables we need to pass in. And then after that, we need to pass in an interpreter. Now the interpreter basically just tells our provisioner what it needs to use to run this script. Now it defaults to bash, so you don't necessarily need to add this for that, but we will just to be sure. So I'm going to add interpreter, just like so, equals, and since I'm on Windows, we're going to use PowerShell. And then we need to pass in the next command, which is dash command. Now, if you are on Linux, and do not put both of these here, I'm just using this as an example, for interpreter, you're going to use bash, and we'll have a comma here, and then dash c is the interpreter you'll use for Linux. But again, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to delete that and keep this here. All right, so once you've done that, that is everything we need to do, and this will hopefully create our instance, and it will replace the host name with self.publicIP, the user with Ubuntu, and the identity file with this key here. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to run a Terraform plan. Pull this up some. Now as you can see, we've got no changes here. That's because the provisioner does not affect our state. It doesn't read that there's a provisioner there and it's not going to change anything just because we added one. All right, so now that we've added our provisioner, go ahead and mark this lesson complete. Come on back to the next one and let's redeploy this instance.